thanks to Team Ninja for providing me an early PS5 copy of Wool and Fallen Dynasty. It's been a few weeks since the game was released, and I have to say that it was a fun and unique experience to delve into. The historical take of the Han Dynasty, finest of Chinese martial art animations, and the unforgiving difficulty were definitely similar. All major part of the component that make Wulong an intense action RPG game in a dark fantasy world. As someone who's quite familiar with Dynasty Warriors series and a novel called Romance of the Three Kingdom, made by Lu Guanzhong, it was a nostalgic moment to meet every figure once again. From the Yellow Turban Rebellion, led by Zhen Zhao, along with his two brothers, to the coalition of the Allied forces against Dong Zhou, we get to witness many heroes on the rise from this chaotic era of the Han Dynasty. Which is what our own character is based on. We begin as a nameless militia who also happens to be on the rise, experiencing the same fate as other heroes and becoming one of them to achieve greatness. Hence why Wulong, also known as Hidden Dragon, is the name of the game. The gameplay is the pinnacle of Wolf Fallen Dynasty, with the spirit system being one of the core mechanics. All actions made by both the player and enemy are dictated by the spirit god. Using martial art, wizardry, or spirit attack will consume your spirit. Receiving damage will also lead your spirit god negative. So remaining that border will most likely break your senses if can hit. To gain bad spirit is either by normal attack or deflecting a coming attack. If you're familiar with Sekiro, primary enemy attack is the best form of defense to defend yourself from getting hit and to avoid losing your posture. In Wulong, however, parry comes with more gimmicks. It is a way to strengthen your senses and to balance your spirit cards to net positive a valuable factor to consider in combat. It's like being able to recover your posture from being vulnerable most of the time by changing between offense and defense, switching the tide of the battle in the process. So having that system in place allows you to be aggressive while utilizing deflect as defensive measure to gain spirit and engage with the gameplay mechanic for more rewarding experience. Like deflect counterattack, or deflecting a critical blow. And the best part is that we have many ways to play the game, which involves having 13 weapon types to choose from, 5 or 2 that consist of offensive and defensive wizardry, and lots of gear set that can modify your character's strength. The agency of our character, while fairly extensive, still feels simplified compared to the previous game like Neo. Of course, being restricted with 2 martial arts per weapon and 4 wizardry spells makes the gameplay more limited. Fortunately, we can carry 2 weapons at the same time, and uh, swapping responsibly between them makes the combat more appealing. We even find new tricks from this feature that didn't exist in the previous demo build back from September. They could have just gone with that build, but instead, they tweak it to make the gameplay a little more complex diving into, despite being simplified. Team Ninja has still left something for the old fanbase to enjoy playing the game, by reflecting a few technical aspects of new combat into this game. It's not much, but it's something that the new community will recognize. Of course, to be engaged with the gameplay, we need an enemy to mess with. From human to demonized being, we encounter diverse enemies that feel unique and engaging, as their behavior really brings out their character, especially most bosses in the game. Fighting humans is close and personal that relies on martial arts. Some can be swift and deadly, while others are heavy hitters that can deal massive damage. Fighting demons is a different story. 
Smaller demons come with numbers, while bigger demons are less prone to stack, making them unflinch from your attacks. Fighting bosses are more developed and can really deliver a top tier action combat that not every game could offer. We engage in a duel against a famous general, Fair and Square, try to overcome the trickery of the wizardry, survive against mythical beasts, or challenge questionable oversized bosses. Unfortunately, the number of enemy variety is what the game severely suffers. Midway through the game, we start seeing the same enemy over and over again until the end of the playthrough. And fighting them again in newer difficulty doesn't really help much either. Granted, new rarity and stats can be found in new difficulty, which means new variety of builds to create. But adding a new extra flavor into the enemy variety will also be appreciated. Wulong is definitely easier to go through with many convenient tools at our disposal. With the morale system, our character becomes stronger depending how much morale we have raised by defeating enemies and capturing flags. We also have many ways to ease that process. We can increase our morale by using the elixir, spend a healing potion over a grave to gain a morale boost, nullifies our vengeance with an item to reduce enemy strength caused by online features, and call for help to gain party member from either reinforcement for NPCs or online co-op for real players. If you only need to try different gear, changing your build is also very convenient. We get to save, edit, or create our build. We can even redistribute our stat for free, which expands more possibilities to approach the game. Story-wise, there was good effort being put into it, especially with cutscenes. They are quite cinematic and high quality in production to narrate the story, allowing players to feel part of the history. It's like watching a classic Chinese movie. One could say that it was a step up from their previous game. One downside of experience, however, is that the narration was a bit rushed. For someone who is first time learning the tales of the Han Dynasty, the narration will be hard to follow, and having character be more developed will help greatly. Of course, it's difficult to cover the whole story of every hero that we meet in a short time. There are also a ton of characters that arise from this chaos, and that will be overwhelming to cover everything, so I'll give it a fair pass. They managed to add their own twist into it by changing a few elements while still staying true to the original story. It was an interesting take from Team Ninja. With the verticality of a jump button, the game expands its horizon with platform and elevated floor to climb over and explore every side of the map. Besides the fact that the mission levels felt more massive, the environment being well made with good quality made the explosion aspect more appealing and photo more greatly supported that aspect. There were a few levels, however, that were like really old jet consoles for some reason. On one side we have the most beautiful scenery ever, and on the other side, the design leaves you in question how this is accepted. Even though progression is still linear, mission levels feel more open for a different path to take and finding anything that's worth exploring, like battle flags, items, or pandas. The soundtracks are right, to say the least. There were only a few soundtracks that were meaningful or engaging, but the rest were not as memorable as I was expecting from most of the team didn't really flow for me during some cutscenes or some boss fight. Maybe they were not catching enough or missing some heavy passage, but they mostly did capture intense moments to make things feel epic. Overall, I will give Wulong Fallen Dynasty a score of 7.5 out of 10. The score is this high mostly because of the combat being satisfying to play. And I am a gameplay fanatic, so there's that. 
it is still one of the top tier massacre action games that one could ask for. I would not want Team Ninja to feel comfortable with this however, as there are still many things to improve upon. And I do hope the DLC will provide good things for the game, just how they did with Neo and Stranger of Paradise, bringing the gameplay to the next level. If you have anything to share, comment down below and let us know what you think. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.